Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the way word, the truth that is contained in your word. Thank you for using the life of Prophet Hosea to paint such a graphic picture of your relationship with Israel and of your grace towards here, as well as the Christian church. Thank you that in your wrath you remembered mercy not only for Israel but for all of us. You help us understand the program you have for Israel as well as the one you have for your church. And help us not get the two dispensation confused. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. I greet you all, brothers and sisters, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Today we are going to hear from the word of God coming from the prophet Hosea, chapter 1, verses 1 to the end, up to chapter 2, verse 1. So I'll ask Brother Ben to come and do the reading of the word of God. Thank you all. Praise God for today and for his love and mercy and guidance and wisdom. Keep asking for wisdom because he will give it generously. So as we get into the word, as Johnson mentioned, we'll be reading from the first chapter of Hosea and all the way to the first verse of the second chapter. The word of the Lord that came to Hosea, son of Berry, during the reign of Aziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, king of Judah, and during the reign of Jeroboam, son of Jehoash, king of Israel. When the Lord began to speak through Hosea, the Lord said to him, Go marry a promiscuous woman and have children with her. For like an adulterous wife, this land is guilty of unfaithfulness to the Lord. So he married Goma, daughter of Diblam, Diblium, and she conceived and bore him a son. Then the Lord said to Hosea, Call him Jezreel, because I will soon punish the house of Jehu for the massacre at Jezreel, and I will put an end to the kingdom of Israel. In that day I will break Israel's bow in the valley of Jezreel. Gomer conceived again and gave birth to a daughter. Then the Lord said to Hosea, Call her Lo Ruama, which means not love, for I will no longer show love to Israel, that I should at all forgive them. Yet I will show love to Judah and I will save them, not by bow, sword or battle, or by horse or horseman, but I, the Lord their God, will save them. After she had weaned Lo Ruama, Gomer had another son. Then the Lord said, Call him Lo Ami, which means not my people, for you are not my people and I am not your God. Yet the Israelites will be like the sand on the seashore which cannot be measured or counted. In the, in the place where I was, it was said to them, You are not my people, they will be called children of the living God. The people of Judah and the people of Israel will come together. They will appoint one leader and will come up out of the land, for great will be the day of Jezreel. Say to your brothers, my people, and of your sisters, my loved ones. Praise God. Yeah, wow. It'll be um, an interesting sermon this week on this one. I asked Johnson before what he would say if I said, Johnson, I'm going out to marry a promiscuous woman. So we better get him back to find out what he's going to speak on. And um, yeah, it's going to be great. Praise God. Thank you, Johnson. Uh, today I have decided to share with you on the theme God needs to save this family God needs to save this family There are many reasons why God needs to save the family described in this message The family of Hosea There are countless reasons why God needs to save any family the primary reason is that we are unable to save our families, ourselves. So let me illustrate a few scenes from modern family today. The first scene is 
In this first scene, we see a house on a corner with a picket fence all around it. A typical family event is occurring. The father slams the front door as he storms out of the house. The mother slams the bedroom door and falls across her bed crying. A teenager daughter is lying across the couch where she has fallen after her father knocked her down. The teenager came home from a party just as her father came from work. It was late, too late to be coming home. Too late for excuses. Almost too late for this family. So in his anger, the father hits his daughter hard. Not just hard, too hard. There's some blood on his hands and all, blood on her face and some blood on, on the couch. And there are some tears, so many tears, so much anger. A little brother sleeps quietly to his room, falls on his knees and whispers this little prayer. God needs to save this family. God needs to save this family. The second scenario is, this, is a choir is singing in a church and another family is coming together for worship. All the family is together except the grandmother. The grandmother is with the family but she's lying in a casket. His grandmother is the only mother that the young boy facing the casket has ever known. His real mother is staring into the casket with a glazed look on her face. Her grief is lost somewhere between drinks, drugs, and depression. The boy isn't even sure that his mother knows where she is. He has never known where his father is. And the only other family that he has is his little sister, who is clinging to his arms. As the lid of the casket closes, a thought comes to his mind. It was hard when grandmother was alive. And it will be impossible now that he's gone. This thought is followed by another thought, almost a prayer. God needs to save this family. These illustrations are a everyday situations in our lives. They can be seen in any home. They can be heard on, on the street. They are a constant reminder to us that we are failing Failing in life, failing at the one thing that makes life most meaningful. We are failing to save our families. There can be no question that we need help and that we are unable to help ourselves. We need God to help us and save our families. That's all we need. In this incident described by Hosea, we observe an example of God's direct involvement in the life of the family. God holds Hosea in the selection of a wife. And even he holds Hosea in the naming of his children. Can you see? He is the one who is helping Hosea in everything. The selection of a wife. The selection of the names of the children. In a way, the divine intervention that we seek in the life of our family is evident in the life of the family of Hosea. But the result of God's intervention is not what you would have expected. This home of Hosea is not a happy home. The wife of Hosea is not a loving wife. And these children that Hosea is raising are not model children. God tells Hosea to choose a woman of, un, of, of questionable lifestyle, a promiscuous, someone who is corrupt in morals. That is what is being told to go and marry. God tells Hosea to find a woman who sleeps around with other men and prostitutes herself, her body. God tells Hosea to let this woman become his wife and let this woman bear his children. When the children from this woman are born, they will be strange children. They will be strange children. In fact, God tells Hosea, you, don't, you won't know who they are. You won't be sure where they are coming from. You have a son and you call him Jezreel, which means much seed has been planted. <laughs> much seed has been planted. But you won't be sure that this is your seed. Isn't that a questionable thing? 
that you are, you have got children, but you are saying, is this my child? Is this my seed? Because you know the wife you have married is sleeping with a lot of men. Which means even if the child you call your own, you don't even know is if it is your own. But you won't be sure that this is your seed. You have a daughter and you call her Luru Hama, which means no mercy. And from that day, the, this girl is born. She will have no mess upon you. Think about it. You have got your own child, your own daughter, and she's called no mercy. She will have no mess on you. She will not respect you as the father. She will not think of you as the father. And all these things is happening in someone's house. And Hosea must have asked God, why are you doing this to me, God? Why is this happening to me, Lord? Why are you punishing me? I am a good man. I am trying to be a godly man. I am a prophet. All I want to do is have a family and raise children. Why should I be married to the wrong woman? Why should I be forced to raise strange children? He must have told God, I am a, your prophet. Why do I have to suffer this way? I just assume that this is what Hosea was asking God. And God most certainly answered, it is exactly because you are my prophet that you are living through this situation. Who else but my prophet could suffer like I suffer? And grieve like I grieve. And therefore understand what I understand. You know, I'm going through this difficult thing with the house of Israel. And you, the prophet, you don't know what I'm going through. I'm grieving. I'm suffering. And I've decided to let you understand how I feel about my people in the same way. You as a prophet, you need to feed it. They abandoned me. The same way your wife abandoned you. Just as you can feel your grief, you also need to feel mine. How painful it is. When they've abandoned me for other goals, when they've abandoned me for other husbands. So Israel, by abandoning God, it was promiscuity in a way. You say that you wanted to know what God knows and you wanted to feel what God feels. Well, Osiah, you are going to know exactly what I know because you are going to live through what I live through. My people, Israel, have played the harlot on me. They've done the wrong thing and given me strange children. And I want you, Hosea, to tell them how I feel. This is what I want to tell you, them. And you cannot tell them how I feel unless you have failed it the same way. Hosea, I'm giving you this experience so that you can feel my grief and experience my pain and know my height. Now you can tell my people how the Lord your God feels when they grieve me. And leave me to chase after other gods. And play the harlot with other nations. You are now able to stand in the gap. And able to prophesy. And able to tell them the truth. In our neighbors. In our cities. In our homes. Like Hosea. We are producing strange families. Hallelujah. We are producing strange families. We are choosing husbands and wives. Like Hosea did. Wives who do not remain faithful to their husbands. Husbands who are running around on their wives. As a result of our strange unions, our unfaithful marriages, we are producing strange children. We are raising sons like Jezreel who think that it makes them a man to have a lot of children from a lot of different women. And then you say you have planted a lot of seed, but you don't know whether it is your seed. 
Having a child make you, make you a dad. But it takes a lot more than to become a father. It takes a lot. We are raising daughters like Loro Hama, children who have no mercy, who are causing high blood pressures upon their parents. And because they have no mercy, they will steal from their fathers. They fight their mothers. They have no respect to their fathers or their parents. They kill their own brothers and sisters. Those are the children we are raising today in our own homes. Children without mercy. We are raising sons and daughters who must be named Law Amani. Because they do not act like anybody in our family. When you look back and you look at your own children and you look at them, you think twice, does anyone in my family ever behave like this? They don't resemble any member of your family. They don't seem to love anybody in our family. We cannot even be sure that they are our family. That's why you find that people these days, they are always looking for DNA. Because they don't think, they don't even feel that this child resembles me in any how. The behavior, anything. Like Hosea, we need to be asking, Lord, what are you doing with our families? And like the illustration of the little boy praying, we need to say a prayer. God needs to save our family. God needs to save our family. Look at the preachers. Look at the Christians around. What is happening to their own children? Do your children resemble you? Most parents today, they come to church on their own. Their children, they don't even come. They don't even know God. They don't even want to know about God. There is something wrong about our families. If we look around, don't we need to be saying, God needs to save our family. If we look at the condition of our society, we need to be praying, God needs to save our family. And if we look at our own household, we need to be praying, God needs to save our family. God needs to save our family. Thank God that God does not allow us to get into anything that God cannot take us out of it. Especially when we belong to God. God's people must suffer through hardship, but God will take them through the hardship. God's people may fall hard times, but God will deliver them from the hard times. God's people have to climb up through the side of the mountain, but my God will give them the strength to climb. Osiah suffered through his family situation, but God was with Osiah in the suffering. He was with Osiah. God told Hosea, the same way that I allowed your family to break down is the same way that I'm going to build your family back up. Jezreel, the seed sower, will become Israel, the nation grower. For I will make him into a nation under God. Lord Ruhama, the unmerciful, will become Ruhama of mercy and grace. This is the God who can change tables. Who can change things? God told us that the same way that I allowed your family to break down is the same way that I'm going to build your family back up. Can you see something there? Can you see something there? Can you see there is something here that God wants? And I'll make sisters love their brothers. And I'll make brothers love their sisters. And Lord who was named not my people will receive a new name. <laughs> You know, when you call your own son, your own son, not my people, Lolo Aman, meaning not my people. They, they no longer your children. You are saying, these are not my children. You will receive a new name. You will be called the children of the living God. And what will people say about your family? That's my question now. What will people say about your family? This is God's family. And they'll say about your children, these are God's children. Ooh. Things have changed. All the names that they've given, Jezreel. Not my seed. Planted so many seeds, but not my seed. Lolo Hama. No mercy. It's my daughter, but no mercy. Lo Amin. 
Think about it. Think about it. Not my people. Not my people. Not my people. Now it's your people. We need to thank God that he has the same message for us that he had for Hosea. God has given us a ministry to the family. It is a ministry of reconciliation and inter intercession. We need time to pray for our families. Whenever you talk to your children, pray for them. God has given us a ministry to, for the family. It is a ministry of repentance and forgiveness. It is a ministry that tells husbands to hold on to their wives. If God brought you together, the same God will keep you together. It is a ministry that tells wives to forgive their husbands. I know your husband has not done everything right, but God knows that he didn't do everything wrong. So please, don't stand on the accusation side as if he has done everything wrong. It is a ministry that tells parents to be reconciled with their children. Everything that you have tried to do for them may not have worked, but believe me, you can work it out. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, through the word of God, you work it out. The same God that gave them to you will help you raise them. If you ask him, God didn't give you perfect children. Why? Because he knew you were not a perfect parent. You need to work it out. Yes, yet God loved you. As Romans 5 verse 8 says, while we were sinners, God died for us. So likewise, while our children are yet foolish, yet disobedient, let us pray for them. That God will do for them what God did for Hosea's children. God will take the bad seed, Jezreel, and make him good seed, Israel, and call him child of God. That's what God can do, because he's God. God will take the heart, the heartless, the unmerciful child, and change him, or he is a child of grace and mercy. God will take the one who does not act like us, who does not talk like us, who does not look like us. God will change his ways, change his lifestyle, and change his dominion. From Lord Luhama to someone who now looks like us, who resembles you, and you are able to say, this is my people. This is my children. These are my children. And people look at our children and say, that child acts like just his mom. That child acts like he's just his dad. That child looks like he's dead. His behavior is just like he's dead. He or she is a child of God. We can't help ourselves. We need God's help. We can't do it on our own. We can't save this family. We can't save our family. We need God to save his family. May God help us. As you listen to this message, as you have been listening, meditating, pray to your family. The only way to succeed in raising up a family, a godly family, is through prayer. Call upon God. Be on your knees. Pray for your children. And they will be just like you. Ooh, what a message to take for us as children of God. God bless you all from now and evermore. Amen. Amen. Oh. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, what amazing love you have for your people Israel and for your church, which is the body of Christ. Thank you for the life of Hosea, the picture it paints of the never-failing love and mercy you have showed to other people, Israel. And all who believe in your name, let us never forget how you rescued us from the slave market of sin. We rejoice to know your plan of redemption. One day be completed when Jesus retains Israel's Messiah. The church will rule and reign with his, him in his kingdom. And Christ Jesus will be crowned as King of Kings, Lords of Lords. Help us show your love and compassion to all those who cross our paths, so they may know that Jesus is Lord. In his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, after hearing such a message, 
It's your family. It's too intact. Thank God. If your family needs God's intervention, still thank God. Pray to God. So it is my prayer of saying, thank you, Lord. Forgive me this family so that I can become the role model to my own children, to my family. So I bring my offering of saying thank you, Lord, for raising up you so that you can become a role model to your children. Let us pray for our offering. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this special gift. We want to thank you for the gift of life. We thank you that you have given us special life, special things to do in life as well. We thank you for the gift. I will say the gift of life and knowing you. When you have called us, you've told us we are not perfect, but you could make us perfect. And you will make us perfect. Father, we bring our offering. Even though we are sinners saved by the grace of God, we still bring it to you. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit abide with you as you make this offering. In Jesus' name, Amen. After the offering, please don't forget to go through the account details and just do the right thing which you are asking to do. We always thank you for your support. May God bless you. Amen. Let me say grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all from now and evermore. Amen.